food chains and the food web in our backyard secrets of the garden by kathleen widener zofield illustrated by priscilla lamont it's spring and the days are getting longer the sunshine warms the earth it's time to plant the garden Dad gets the soil ready. Then my brother and I dig in. I plant zucchini and radish and carrot seeds. My brother plants lettuce and pea and beet seeds. We cover the seeds with soil and pat it down with our hands. Maybe they'll plant some catnip for me. Then we watch the sky. I'm hoping to see some rain clouds but the sky is clear and blue. We hook up the hose and a rainbow sparkles in its spray. A good long rain would help. Patience, I don't see anything. Old leaves and vegetable scraps along with a little poop from our coop make good compost to add to the soil. Billions of tiny bacteria digest the vegetables, leaves and scraps. That process releases nutrients that are good for growing plants. I try to imagine what's going on under that soil. Are our seeds alive and growing? Every morning we hurry out of bed and check to see if anything has sprouted. But days go by and still our garden looks like an empty patch of brown. Then, one morning, my brother calls out. He is the first to see. I run over and bend down close to the ground, and I see them too. Tiny sprouts are poking up through the soil. Here are some different sprouting plants. Beet, zucchini, spinach, potato, and tomato. Sprouts send roots down into the soil. They push their tiny stems up above the soil. Soon, two little leaves unfold on each stem. Then more leaves grow. Each day our sprouts grow a little bigger. Soon they are big enough to be called seedlings. Early in spring, mom planted tomato and green pepper seeds in small pots. She kept them warm indoors by a sunny window. Now her seedlings are ready to go in the garden. She puts potatoes the size of marbles in the ground too. They will sprout more quickly than potato seeds. Sunlight gives plants energy. Plants use energy from the sun to make food out of air, water, and nutrients from the soil. That's called photosynthesis. Plants store the food in their roots, leaves, stems, and seeds, and fruits. These are the nutri nutritious parts we eat, and when we eat them, they pass their energy along to us. Leaves are lettuce, spinach, and cabbage. Roots are radishes, carrots, potatoes, and beets. Fruit is zucchini, pumpkins, tomatoes, and peppers. Stems are asparagus, celery, and rhubarb. Seeds are peas, beans, and corn. The green leaves of a plant catch sunlight. Tiny holes on the underside of each leaf take in air. A plant's roots take in water and nutrients from the soil. Sunshine, fresh air, water, and soil help the seedlings in our garden grow. Our lettuce and radishes are the first plants ready to eat. We nibble on the sweet green leaves and crunch the spicy red roots. But something or someone is enjoying the vegetables as much as we are. I look for a good place to hide, tiptoe in and sit very still. You wouldn't believe the things I see. Our little garden is filled with life. Many types of animals eat plants. People eat plants too. Plants are the first link in any food chain. There are many different interconnected food, cha food chains in the garden. A short food chain. Lettuce grows, rabbits eat lettuce. I spot a small brown rabbit munching lettuce. So he's the one. 
The rabbit's ear twitches and our cat, Honey, sees it. But the rabbit is too fast. He shoots out of the garden like a rocket. Honey will be good at keeping the rabbit away from our lettuce. One morning, I noticed some ears of corn on the ground. A few of the kernels have been nibbled. Maybe a mouse discovered the fallen ears and stopped for a snack. Last fall, Mom found an empty mouse nest on the ground under her old tomato plants. The mice had woven grass and dead leaves to make a comfortable pocket and lined it with lint and downy feathers. I wonder where the mice might be living this year. I lie back and watch the clouds. High above, a hawk flies over. She turns back and begins to circle. Though most of the animals I see are plant eaters, a few are meat eaters. The hawk glides down silently. In an instant, the bird snatches a grasshopper in her claws and swoops away. Yikes, better stay in your nest, mice. Meat eaters eat other animals. Here's a longer food chain. Would a hawk eat a chicken? A longer food chain, corn plant grows. Mouse eats corn, hawks eat mouse. I like catching grasshoppers and other insects and spiders in the garden too, but I don't eat them. I usually watch them for a while and let them go. Once I found ca caterpillars gnawing on mom's pepper plants. After that, I caught as many as I could and fed them to our chickens. Look at this shiny bug. It's called a potato beetle, potato. Potato leaves are its favorite food. Potato leaves, yuck. I don't care as long as it doesn't eat the potato roots. If beetles eat all the potato leaves, the roots may die. Maybe I should dig up this plant. We could have the potatoes for supper. Egads, if there are too many of these, they could eat your whole garden. Herbivores are plant eaters. Aphids, mites, potato beetles, white flies, snail slugs, grasshoppers, and caterpillars. Carnivores are meat eaters. They're ladybugs, spiders, praying mantises, toads, and hawks. Luckily, you have help. Chickens help too. We like a few caterpillars with our corn. We are omnivores. An even longer food chain, pepper plant grows, Caterpillar eats pepper plant, hen eats caterpillar, hen lays eggs, we eat eggs. Spiders are hunters. A few like wolf spiders stalk insects on the ground, but most like garden spiders build sticky webs that help them catch their prey. Another food chain, potato plant grows, Beetle eats le the potato leaves. Spider eats beetle. A longer food chain. Potato plant grows. Beetle eats the potato leaves. Spider eats beetle. Robin eats spider. Lots of different insects are busy eating plants or other insects. The spider is busy with his beetle. They don't seem to notice that a robin has been watching. A beetle or a spider would make a good snack for a robin. All of a sudden I see a robin scratching and pecking at the soil. He's found an earthworm. As he pulls, the worm stretches like a rubber band, then snap, it pops out and the bird swallows it in one gulp. No arms, no legs, no hands, no feet, but it's a tug of war. Why is it so hard to pull the worm out of the ground? He has tiny bristles that help him hang on to the walls of his burrow. We use our cultivators to loosen up the soil around the plants so water can get down to the roots. We spread compost to add nutrients to the soil, but the worms are really better at helping the soil than we are. They work at it every day and never seem to get tired. Worms are a special part of a food chain when plants die, they fall to the ground and begin to rot.
the worms eat the rotting plants. As the worms tunnel around, they leave digested plant matter behind in the soil. The digested plant matter returns important nutrients to the soil. The worms also loosen up the soil as they tunnel. Then water and air get down to the plants more easily. The plants roots more easily. Worms help the plants grow. The plants depend on the worms and the sunshine and fresh air. They depend on the rain and, and on the good, rich nutrients in the soil. Oh boy, my beets are ready. I prefer zucchini. Mice are nice, bugs are better. We depend on the plants. Without them, there would be no food or animals for people. We're all connected. Every food chain begins with a plant. Together, all the food chains in the garden make up a food web. Every member of the food web is important for a healthy garden. People are part of the food web too. Ecology is the study of all the living things in one area or environment and how they relate to each other. The word ecology comes from the Greek word I, I which means house or home. Any living thing's environment is its home. I like to call the garden our summer home. Our real home is made of wood. It has four walls and a roof and a floor that keep out the sun and rain and dirt. It's a good house really, but our garden home is different. Only my family and I live in our wooden home, but in our garden home, we make way for the neighbors, for the rabbits, birds, spiders, and beetles. It's their summer home too. As autumn nears, the days get shorter and cooler. We harvest the vegetables that are left. The time has come to clean our tools and put them away for the winter. Time for the garden to rest. The animals have eaten and stored fat for the winter months ahead. We are also busy storing food. We can tomatoes, pickle beans, freeze corn, and hang baskets of potatoes in the cellar. Let's plant strawberries next year, or maybe pumpkins. It's a little sad saying goodbye, but I know that as we sit together through the long winter evenings, we'll be having fun planning our next garden and dreaming about the warm days of spring.